Next we will discuss Lemma 7.4. Let x be a normed space over k and f be a non-zero linear functional on x. If E is an open subset of x, then f of E is an open subset of k. So proof of Lemma 7.4. Since f is non-zero, there exists some x belongs to x such that f of x not equal to 0. Now let a equal to x by f of x. Then a belongs to x and f of a equal to 1. That is if f is non-zero then there is some a belongs to x such that f of a equal to 1. Let x belongs to E be arbitrary. Since E is open, then there exists some R greater than 0 such that the open ball about x with the radius R is a subset of E. Now let k dash belongs to the open ball about f of x with the radius R by norm A. Then x minus f of x minus k dash into a belongs to x and norm of x minus of x minus f of x minus k dash into a here we have x belongs to x and a belongs to x f of x minus k dash belongs to k so total belongs to x and norm of x minus this okay so which is equal to x x cancel then norm of f of x minus k dash into a okay so this is equal to mod f of x minus k dash into norm a okay so which is less than r by norm a into norm a okay since k dash belongs to the, this open ball open ball about f of x with radius this r by nomia so this less than r by nomia into nomia so which is equal to r so this means x minus f of x minus k dash into a belongs to uxr the open ball about x with radius r okay that is x minus f of x minus k dash into a belongs to e since this ux are subset of e okay then f of x minus f of x minus k dash into f of a we take f of this so we have this which belongs to f of e so we have f of a equal to 1 then this means f of x minus of f of x minus a dash belongs to f of e here f of x f of x cancel then we have k dash belongs to f of e so therefore u of f of x r by nomia that is open ball about f of x with the radius r by nomia is a subset of f of e since we have taken k dash from this u of f of x r by norm a and we have k dash belongs to f of e so this implies u of f of x r by norm a is a subset of f of e so that is f of e is open okay next theorem 7.5 this theorem is known as han banach separation theorem let x be a normed space over k and e1, e2 be non-empty disjoint convex subsets of x where e1 is open in x then there is a real hyperplane in x which separates e1 and e2 in the following sense. For some f belongs to x dash and t belongs to r we have real part of f of x1 which is less than t 
which is less than or equal to real part of f of x2 for all x1 belongs to e1 and x2 belongs to e2 okay now the proof of theorem 7.5 that is hand banach separation theorem consider the set e1 minus e2 which is the set of all x1 minus x2 such that x1 belongs to e1 x2 belongs to e2 then e1 minus e2 is non-empty since e1 is non-empty and e2 is non-empty so e1 minus e e2 is also non-empty next e1 minus e2 is convex for this we take x1 minus x2 y1 minus y2 belongs to e1 minus e2 then lambda into x1 minus x2 plus 1 minus lambda into y1 minus y2 which is equal to lambda into x1 plus 1 minus lambda into y1 here we open these two brackets then we rearrange okay so we have this lambda into x1 plus 1 minus lambda into y1 minus lambda into x2 plus 1 minus lambda into y2 here we know that x1 belongs to e1 also y1 belongs to e1 e1 is convex so lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda into y1 belongs to e1 and also here this is belongs to e2 since e1 and e2 are convex so we have this belongs to e1 minus e2 okay now e1 minus e2 is open given that e1 is open okay then by theorem 5.6a e1 minus e2 is open next zero does not belong to e1 minus e2 since e1 and e2 are disjoint so this does not belong to e1 minus e2 now let e equal to e1 minus e2 and y equal to singleton zero okay then uh, we let this e equal to e1 minus e2 and y equal to singleton zero we substitute this in theorem 7.3 then we have e1 in the we have e intersection y equal to 5 okay so we have the condition of theorem 7.3 to get some f belongs to x dash such that real part of f of x is not equal to 0 this is for all x belongs to e okay that is real part of f of x1 minus x2 is non zero for all x1 belongs to e1 and x2 belongs to e2 this is our equation number one next real part of f of e1 and the real part of f of e2 are disjoint okay since if these are not disjoint then we have some common element say r so we have r belongs to real part of f of e1 in the session real part of f of t here we are assuming the contrary okay then r equal to real part of f of x1 and r equal to real part of f of x2 for some x1 belongs to e1 and x2 belongs to e2 so this means real part of f of x1 equal to real part of f of x2 so real part of f of x1 minus x2 equal to 0 for x1 belongs to e1 and x2 belongs to e2 so this contradicts our equation number one equation number one says that real part of f of x1 minus x2 is non-zero but we have arrived here equal to zero which is a contradiction so this means here our assumption is wrong that means real part of f of e1 and real part of f of e2 are disjoint okay now since real part of f of e1 and the real part of f, f of e2 are disjoint convex subsets of r they are non-overlapping intervals in 
R. Okay. Now assume that real part of f of e1 lies to the left of real part of f of 2. If not, then replace f by minus f. Okay. Now, since real part of f from x to r is a non-zero continuous real functional and e is open in x. Okay, then by previous lemma, real part of f of e1 is an open interval in R. Okay, now let T be the right end point of real part of f of e1. Then clearly real part of f of x1 which is less than T which is less than or equal to real part of f of x2. This is for all x1 belongs to e1 and x2 belongs to e2. Okay, so this completes the proof of theorem 7.5, that is proof of Han Banach separation theorem. Okay, thank you.